for a very long time i have felt that the travel that you get on regular sized mechanical keyboards was too deep and to solve this i have tried methods like adding o rings to those keyboards but that never felt right and i didn't get the satisfactory feeling that i was looking for but today we are going to check out the logitech g813 or g815 flight sync that i think is the perfect high end low profile keyboard for people who don't find the regular sized mechanical keyboards to be good enough and it's not just the typing experience that is amazing with this keyboard but also how complete the list of features it has and how well executed it is as a keyboard that has been designed from ground up to be low profile It comes at a price point of 200 US dollars or around 14000 Indian rupees but I do think that it is completely worth it. But there are some imperfections that we are going to talk about in this video starting with the fact that the exact same keyboard is called G815 in US and G813 in India and some other regions because that is a thing that Logitech just does. Hey guys I am Siddharth and let's get started. I am extremely pleased with the overall design of this keyboard. The super clean and professional looking aesthetics really suit my taste and this will also fit perfectly in an office in addition to looking great with a gaming rig. The metal chassis made with aluminum makes it feel extremely sturdy and there is absolutely no flex in it even after being very thin. The side profile of this keyboard really makes you realize how shorter it is compared to even other low profile options available in the market. and it really feels like a thin crust pizza in the sea of regular sized pizzas but you can of course adjust its height by pulling out the legs at bottom and it actually has two sets of legs of different sizes to set it either to a 4 degree angle or an 8 degree angle which is nice the braided cable for the keyboard isn't too thick or unmanageable considering that it is also carrying the pass through for the usb 2.0 port that is present on this keyboard But while this USB port is meant for plugging in things like your mouse, being able to transfer files from pen drives and card readers would have been really great with a USB 3.0 port. The unusually wide volume wheel is made of metal. It feels very high quality and it is a real pleasure to use. You also have media buttons under it that are made of rubber and are not mechanical. They kind of have the feeling that rubber buttons have on a TV remote, but they are very silent and sensitive, which I like, and they do feel tactile for rubber buttons, so I don't mind them not being mechanical at all. On the top left side, you have five more of the same kind of buttons. You have a brightness control button that switches between five levels. Then there is a game mode button which disables windows keys when you activate it, but the Zhihub software also allows you to customize the keys that get disabled when you activate this, making it more useful. Then we have three buttons that switch between different profiles on this keyboard, and then there is a macro button which allows you to instantly record macros on it and assign it to one of the five extra keys on the left side, which we will talk more about. The font on the keycaps is also very simple and clean in typical Logitech fashion which I really prefer over the aggressive and gamery style that some other brands go with. Logitech says that they have used their own GL low profile switches on these and I went for their GL linear switches but when you take a closer look at these switches they say KL on them because they are actually made by KL but these are not identical to the KL low profile switches because the slots for keycaps in them have a wider gap than regular KL switches which means that the keycaps for KL low profile switches may not fit on these but there are still keycap options available for this on AliExpress The keycaps have these prongs that hook into the key switches and this looks quite fragile compared to how robust the Cherry MX keycaps are or even how the keycaps of regular K low profile keyboards are. Now I was worried about breaking these keycaps while inserting or removing them as I saw in the G915 review by Hardware Canucks that they had broken one of those hooks on these keycaps while removing it. and i can see that happening if you are not careful with these keycaps so what you can do is just remove these with a keycap puller straight up and more importantly when you are inserting them try to push it in a way that the keycap is parallel to the keyboard and both pins go in together so even though i don't think that these keycaps will break easily i do think that you will have to be careful while removing and inserting them and logitech should have really included a keycap puller with this keyboard by the way make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with bell icon so you don't miss out on future videos the lighting on the keyboard is really great it is bright and doesn't spill a lot on the chassis which is a look that i prefer but one odd thing on this keyboard is that even though all the keys and the logo have rgb lighting the five keys on the top left have fixed colors So the profile keys are permanently yellow the macro key is red 
and the game mode key is white. I don't mind the num lock and caps lock indicators having white LEDs, but this yellow color on profile keys looks really odd and I am not sure why they went with this very unusual choice. I don't really mind this of course as it is a minor thing, but it does stand out because of the rest of the perfection that this keyboard has. Another not so good thing on this is that the secondary characters on these keycaps are not translucent like the main characters, so they don't light up. And they are kind of difficult to see because Logitech chose a greyish color instead of a whiter shade which is difficult to see through the brightness of the backlit keys. Logitech's Z-Hub software works really well with this keyboard. There are plenty of options for customization of lighting and you can really create some advanced custom RGB effects which I wasn't expecting. The 5 extra Z keys on this keyboard can be very useful while gaming but they really make this keyboard extremely useful for productivity because you can basically assign any function, shortcut or macro to them and the 3 profile switching buttons also allow you to have 15 of these actions easily accessible on your side. The software allows easy customization of what these keys do and what they do can change automatically when software switches to different profiles when you launch different games or applications which just skyrockets the productivity potential combined with the G-Shift functionality which can make you double the number of available shortcuts per profile but I don't think that you will be needing them. The keyboard also has onboard memory on it so you can also save your profiles directly on it so they will work without the software which is really nice. One feature it does lack compared to its competition is that you can only customize the extra G keys and not just any other key like other keyboards in this price range but I personally never change the function of any of the regular keys on a keyboard and Logitech's automatic profile switching does work very well even if it may not be perfect. This keyboard also supports Aurora lighting software which means that you can make it do all kinds of things like display CPU or RAM usage amongst other things like adding a shortcut helper and displaying volume controls. The G815 also has preset lighting profiles for some games like Battlefield 5 and CSGO. It makes the keyboard only light up the useful keys which is a neat feature even if I don't find it to be incredibly useful. And finally coming to the typing experience, it is the best that I have had on any keyboard. I have got the GL linear switches which are like Cherry MX reds but you can also get this in GL tactile and GL clicky variants which would behave like Cherry MX browns and Cherry blue switches. I personally really prefer linear switches for gaming and for typing. The travel distance of these keys is something that I find to be perfect so it makes it very comfortable to type on and I am also able to type faster on it as I don't have to make my fingers go unnecessarily deep which reduces finger movement which increases the speed. These keys are also quieter than Cherry MX red keys which I really appreciate. For gaming, I also find it to be great and the lower actuation distance should also give you some advantage in gaming. One thing that slightly bothers me is that this keyboard doesn't come with a wrist rest and while this was a conscious decision by Logitech as they found that this keyboard was so low that adding a wrist rest would have messed up the typing position of your hands, using the desk as a wrist rest isn't an ideal solution for all people because you may have a marble desk like me which is very hard to put your wrists directly on and it also gets really cold to touch during winters. So the ideal solution would be to put this on a big mouse pad like this ROG sheath and that will give your wrists the cushion that you may need on a hard desk. So overall, I am extremely happy with the Logitech G815. I think that it is a keyboard that has been executed almost perfectly and in addition to the low profile switches which are a pleasure to type on, it also does everything else right with its extra customizable keys along with its awesome volume wheel and media keys. There are some minor drawbacks like the secondary function on the keys not being backlit and some keys having fixed colors but I really don't consider them to be an issue as they don't affect the functionality of this keyboard which is excellent. Logitech also has a wireless version of the G815 called G915 or G913 that comes at an even higher price point of 250 US dollars but unless you really need wireless connectivity or want to keep RGB turned off I don't find it practical to have a battery powered RGB keyboard in the long term. 
So for me, this is really the best high-end keyboard on the market and I am not just saying that because I have replaced my HyperX Alloy Elite RGB keyboard with custom PBT keycaps with this and that was already one of the best keyboards. The low-profile keyboards do come at a price premium, but I don't feel that the price tag on the G813 is unjustified because you will also see regular-sized keyboards with the same feature set to be similarly priced. So I'll have links to buy this in the video description. You can also check out my review of the MSI Vigor GK50 low-profile keyboard, which is much cheaper than the G815 but only comes with clicky switches. Let me know which keyboard is your favorite in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down if you disliked it. Subscribe with bell, follow me on socials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.